today in New York City, the United Nations is having a summit. The UN summit is a non-communicable disease. Now, this is the first time the UN has addressed that issue, and it's the first world summit on that topic, and it hasn't been an agenda item for world health in the recent past because the focus was on acute care. It was on infectious disease. It was on HIV. So we need a national agenda that creates a, both a culture of health and a culture where people walk. But why did we choose walking as sort of the centerpiece of a physical activity initiative? It's been clearly proven that it has tremendous benefits for health. So we know that we are choosing an exercise which has a large evidence base behind it. We're going to combine those three conditions, smoking, diabetes and obesity, into one you know, terrible condition called smoker diabetes. <laughs> Actually, low fitness kills more Americans than smoking, diabetes and obesity combined. Sometimes the most powerful things that a person can do for their health are best left non-medicalized. When we prioritize walking, either by doing it during, during our lunch hour, or walking to work, or walking after work, that really sends a powerful message to our patients and to our colleagues. Physicians are, are growing to embrace the fact that we need to be more than just clinicians. We also need to be activists. 90% of all cardiovascular disease is preventable. So if I said, I can guarantee you with 90% of surety that you will never have a heart attack, you'd be listening very closely at that point. You'd want to know exactly <laughs> what I was going to say after that. And all of it is about modifying your risk factors. All of them are affected by exercise, every single one. This is the population where prevention is most significant. Uh, of course, for people with diabetes, moderate exercise fits into uh, an awesome it's an awesome part of the program for everyone. Now we know that exercise is as effective as psychotherapy. Well, what a blow to people like me. You know, I'm a psychologist. Oh, you mean that's better than examining a person's life and all that? Yes, it's as good as psychotherapy. What's really critical, as a number of folks have alluded to uh, today, is how do we design physical activity back into our communities, back into everyday life? Our goal is that by, nine, by 2020, 90% of Americans will live within three miles of a trail system. And so what we're really looking at is not mileage, but we're looking at access. In my role with digital and technology, I'm really excited that the national uh, organization came out with a, a mobile app, uh, a walking paths app. Basically, the walking paths app kind of targets your geolocation, and then it pulls up a list of different parks and um, trails in your local area. Our vision is to make America a great place to walk. Um, the main thing that I want to state here, and it's really echoing what we've heard all the way from the beginning of the presentation, is that we need a national walking movement. Health and cross-agency partnerships are going to be absolutely essential to driving that message home. And I believe that Kaiser Permanente as a national leader on the issue of walking is really going to help advance that.